Um, well, first, I think I'm going to start with the good news to say it seems that JBS uh, was a little more prepared. They reported the hack. Uh, the speed of their response suggests that they had imagined and prepared for it. And if the reports that they had backup servers is correct and that they had most of their data there, it may mean they're back online quickly and that they have some protection against ransomware. But that doesn't mean that it's all good news because we have just, this is just another dimension of critical infrastructure. It's another reference point to say that this is the new vehicle for attack and that these attackers are just going to keep coming until we do a better job of protecting ourselves. Well, well I, I feel like that's where I want to go next. We'll, we'll do a better job of protecting ourselves. It seems like we're clueless into all of this and have absolutely no idea of where it's coming from originally or how to stop yeah. it only after the fact. I, who's next? Yeah, so um, anyone. And, and I really can't stress this strongly enough. If there is some company out there, particularly someone who is in supply chain or critical infrastructure or critical services or um, necessary capabilities, and you are not at your board level having these discussions about the investments that you need to make to protect yourself, I don't know what it's going to take. Now, I do think the administration is kind of coming alive on this. They just put out an executive order on May 12th on uh, protecting the nation's uh, cybersecurity. Uh, and I think there's some really good things in there in terms of standards and protections and strengthening CISA. But this really is one of those moments where I cannot stress enough, do not think that you aren't interesting because you are either the target or the transportation to another interesting target. And C-suites need to get involved and you need to understand how you protect yourself. Again, if JBS actually had data in backup servers, that is one of the greatest moves you can make against ransomware attacks. I'm also thinking about, Casey, what responsibility our great tech companies have in trying to help out in this fight. Look, they've got a huge responsibility. We know that Microsoft, for example, was the source of many of the exploits that were used in the Solar Winds hack uh, that, that took place over the past year. So there's a clear role for them to play. At the same time, you know, these guys are not state level actors. They don't have intelligence agencies working for them. So I really do think that the government has a huge responsibility here as well. What about, Sue, the idea that our big and sophisticated technology companies and the leaders of those businesses have a greater responsibility to get involved, whether it's on their own initiative or not, to try and help th this situation out? Um, yes, they do. Um, I see a lot of good moves, though, on this front. But Casey makes a great point. You're asking private companies to protect themselves against state-level actors. And so it really is going to take companies themselves to protect their own infrastructure, our tech companies to produce more and more what I'm going to call safe technology. And the government's got to leap into the fray here and both set some standards and have some policies that allow us to put some teeth into response against these actors. Casey? I, I think that that is absolutely right. And I think the really big question here is what posture does the government wind up taking against these ransomware payments, right? We know that it's cryptocurrency that is enabling this market. So far, governments have been fairly hands off when it comes to cryptocurrency. But it seems like if there was ever a time to intervene or, or develop a policy, this would be it. Oh, that's an interesting point you raised, because, Sue, there are those who are writing about that fact and say this is one of the reasons why you should ban cryptocurrency altogether, because it's the, the primary way that these hackers get paid. Maybe. I think cryptocurrency, though, that is a genie that we're going to have a hard time putting back in the bottle. I think I'd rather start with some really clear um, guidance from the government on how to protect yourself and when you make ransom payments. And again, I will tell you that I understand the impetus to pay the ransom to get your business back online. But I will tell you, it is a losing game because you have no idea where they are in your network and whether they're going to come back the next time. So we got to jump on this one as a collective. Well, look, Sue, I mean, C Colonial paid. We don't know uh, w what JBS has, has done. Should, should they just pay too? It sounds like you're advocating that we don't pay. 
Yeah, I I would I would say once you pay, if you are confident that that's going to be the only time they're going to hit you, I think that you're just kidding yourself. Whether you, you have just proven what you're willing to do. So this is, and Casey said it really well, this is an, a moment where the government's got to get in and have some of these conversations and set standards, especially for public company, about what you pay and how you respond. 